Hi everyone, welcome to my cooking demonstration. Uh, today I'm going to be preparing a dish called Three Sisters Mash. Uh, this is an event that's part of our North Andover Reads. Our North Andover Reads program is a community event that's a partnership between the Stevens Memorial Library and the North Andover Public Schools. Uh, the event runs from mid-October to mid-November and this year's theme is First Neighbors, Still Neighbors, where we will be learning all about our first neighbors. You can visit our website for more reading lists and to see other events that are happening this month. So the cookbook I'm using today is called The Sioux Chef's Indigenous Kitchen by Sean Sherman. Sean was born in South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Reservation in 1974. He is a member of the Oglala Lakota tribe. He attended powwows, sun dances, family gatherings, holiday parties, and school events. Native American spirit was always present, as was the strong sense of family. This book is about the joy of indigenous cooking. It reveals the delight in finding ingredients right outside our kitchen doors. In a world that has become overcomplicated and reliant on appliances, gizmos, and tricky methods, we are returning to the simple preparations that enhance the bold, fresh flavors of our local foods. These recipes, inspired by methods handed down through the ages, generation after generation, are integral to our culture, and as with all good recipes, the dishes will change from cook to cook. These recipes are meant to be a guideline, not formulas. And as you will see here today, I am definitely using his recipe as a guideline. Um, I'll be making a few substitutions, and I will talk about um, everything I'm using here today. So the dish I'm making for you today is called the Three Sisters. Uh, the Three Sisters are corn, beans, and squash. They were planted together. Um, they, the corn grows tall and acts as a trellis for the beans. The squash covers the ground and provides shade for the other plants. Eaten together, they are a complete nutrici nutritious meal, um, and they are often used in indigenous cooking. So the Three Sisters Mash. Um, we start off with one to two tablespoons of sunflower oil. Uh, sunflower is a popular crop to use, but unfortunately I could not find sunflower oil. So today we are using safflower oil. Uh, sunflower oil was popular to use in indigenous cooking. Um, it was used for everyday cooking. And hazelnut and walnut and pumpkin seed oil were used for sauces and dressings. Um, and rendered duck fat and goose fat were used for, for pan frying and roasting. So let's get started here with the sunflower oil. I'm gonna turn my pan on low, low to medium. And normally I would not even measure this, but we're following a recipe today. So I'm gonna use exactly two tablespoons if you're like me, when you cook, you like to create as few dirty dishes as possible, which means you often don't measure things. So there we go. We'll get started with the two tablespoons of safflower oil today. Although if you can find sunflower oil, um, that's excellent. And I believe Sean Sherman also includes a recipe for sunflower oil. He includes a recipe for most of these extra ingredients that I will talk to you about today. Um, so next up, after your oil is warming up, you can start chopping up the shallot. Now you can use a shallot or a wild onion. Um, today I have a shallot, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and chop it up. This is cooking. Um, 
we'll prepare our next ingredient, the summer squash. Um, you can use either summer squash or zucchini. Um, I think zucchini would add a nice color to the dish, but today I'm going to use summer squash. You cut the squash into about one inch pieces. Um, this is a mash, so you don't want your pieces to be too big. All right, so I'm gonna let the, the shallot cook down a little bit before I add the summer squash. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit as well. Um, so, We've got our squash and the next sister, the beans. So Sean Sherman recommends uh, dry beans, heirloom beans specifically. Um, so what I used, I used a packet of um, three bean soup beans. There are some lentils, some split peas in this mixture. Um, so if you can, I would recommend making your own mix, buying uh, dry beans, mixing them yourself together, and using that to make the cedar braised beans is what's in this dish, cedar braised beans. Um, but I will say that the pre-made, the soup bean mixture worked really well. You could also just use canned beans. So Sean's recipe for cedar braised beans, um, you start with your dry beans. Ideally, you would let them sit in water overnight for, or for at least six hours uh, to reduce the cooking time for the next day. In my experience, and I did soak my beans overnight, they will still take a long time to cook the next day. Um, so what you would do is you would take your beans, they will have soaked overnight, You'll add them to a pot with three cups of water and a cedar branch. Now, I looked, I even went on a hike, I could not find a cedar branch in my area. So what I used was a cedar plank. Now this worked okay, um, but when you're making beans from dry, you will need to be able to close this pot lid all the way. Um, you'll put your beans in here, the ones that have soaked overnight, uh, three cups of water, your cedar twig, if you can't find cedar, that's okay. Um, and you'll bring it to a boil. Um, let it simmer then for 25 minutes and start checking on it. It will have to simmer until the beans are soft. You do not want um, to eat dry beans. Once the beans are soft and it took about, it took close to two hours when I did it, to be honest. Um, once your beans are soft, you can drain them, save that water, um, that bean, sort of bean stock water can be used in other recipes. Um, but here I have the finished product for the cedar braised beans. These are the ones made from the 13 bean soup mix. There is unfortunately no cedar but I did add juniper. Juniper was often used in place of pepper. I have juniper berries here. And I ground them to make a sort of pepper and you'll add these to your beans um, and you can even add them to the finished dish. So I will go ahead and add my, my one cup of cedar braised beans. So next up we have squash, we have beans, the third sister is corn. And now here you could use canned corn, but it's summertime. I went to the farm stand, I got sweet corn from the farm stand. Um, what I did was I boiled it for about 10 minutes. Um, you shuck the corn, you boil it until it's soft. 
And now we can just cut an ear of corn straight off the cob and into our Three Sisters mash. So here I'm choosing to cut corn straight off the cob. I am not going to measure out the one cup of corn. Instead, I am going to just use one ear of corn. Um, but the recipe does call for one cup of corn. And it doesn't have to be straight off the cob. Um, you can use canned, or frozen. Um, but you should use sweet corn. So now here we have our three sisters, corn, bean, and squash. And we are going to add hominy. If you're from the south, you might be more familiar with hominy than I am. Um, but hominy is a type of corn. Uh, to make hominy, you soak corn kernels in lye. And then the outside rinses off, and you're left with the inside, the puffed white kernel. Uh, this is white hominy. You can also get um, yellow hominy from yellow corn. Uh, Sean Sherman has a recipe in his book to make hominy from dry. Here though I'm using canned hominy because that is what I could find. So I'm going to add my half a cup of canned hominy. And now for the seasoning. This dish is seasoned with maple syrup, sage, and mint. Uh, maple syrup was often used um, as a sweetener. So again, I'm going to use my measuring spoon. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. Now this is where, if you, like me, could not find a cedar branch for your cedar braised beans, I feel like the maple would have overpowered it anyways. So don't worry if you had to leave that out. Um, but if you do make this and you make it with a cedar branch, please um, send me an email. Let me know how it turned out. I'd love to hear. Um, I'd love to hear how the cedar, you know, added to the flavor of the beans. Because the cedar plank, you know, it smelled good while it was boiling, but I wasn't able to leave the plank in because I couldn't close the lid of the beans. All right. So there's my maple syrup, and now I'm going to chop up some sage and some mint. All right, now we are just about done. The last ingredient is smoked salt. And again, unfortunately, I could not find smoked salt. So we will just be using a pinch of regular salt. Um, Sean Sherman does have in his, uh, in his book directions on how to make your own smoked salt. Um, you can do it on the grill. Uh, if you're grilling for the summer, it would be really easy to make a big batch of smoked salt to use for the rest of the season.
And now here we have our Three Sisters Mesh. I'll go ahead and turn the heat off. And now this um, will serve about four to six people. It's meant as a side dish. You could serve it with, um, with salmon, with rice. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know if you make this recipe. I'd love to hear from you. And check out our website to learn about other North Andover Reads events happening this month. Thank you. Do I sound really awkward? Because I feel really awkward.